So in the previous video, I demonstrated how you can consolidate 52 CSV files into this single table in Excel using Power Query or Get and Transform. I then used a pivot table to consolidate these dates into months and years. And if you've just got one table of data and your business runs on a calendar year, then that may be fine. However, if you've got multiple sources of data or multiple tables you want to join together, or your business runs on a fiscal year, say from the 1st of April or the 1st of June, then you may need a different approach. And this is where Power Pivot can really help you. So I'm going to demonstrate how you can join tables together in Power Pivot and how you can use a calendar table to present data in a date order of your choosing. So here we go. So I have a store code and I want to be able to get a store code name. I've set up a little store code mapping table. Store code, store name, and then city and region. I've also set up a calendar table. My calendar table must have a consecutive date and my calendar table starting from the 1st of April. And I've then got things like calendar month number or calendar year. And then importantly, I've got a fiscal month number and a fiscal year. And then I've also got the month name. So I'm going to load these two tables into Power Pivot and join them together with my import table. So because I've already loaded this into Excel from Power Query, this table I just need to right click on the query and say load to. Then I can change where this table is loaded to. So rather than a table, I'm going to say only create a connection. Then also you click add this to the data model. The data model is Power Pivot. Select load. You'll get this possible data loss warning. Uh, that just means that your Excel table you've loaded is about to disappear, but that's fine. And now it's loading it into Power Pivot. 1,456 rows have been loaded into Power Pivot. So now we can load our mapping table. So we start with the store one, we just click anywhere in the table, go to data and from table. Now all we need to do is just check that our columns are formatted correctly. Yep, they're all text, so that's great. We say close and load, load to. And again, we make sure only create connection is selected and we take this add to the data model. Now we click load. And we just repeat this for our calendar table. We click in our calendar table, we go to data on the menu, from table, now our date is actually formatted as a date time format. So we want to change that. So rather than date time, we just want date. Now we work our way along. Uh, our calendar month number, yep, yeah, that's fine. Calendar year, I tend to change to text. Um, just sometimes the uh, pivot tables report things better if they're text. And fiscal month's fine. Fiscal year, again, I'll change that to text. And then again, month name, that's text, that's fine. Close and load, close and load two. And the same thing again, only create connection and add this data to the data model, and then click load. So this data is now loaded. These three tables have been loaded into Power Pivot. So there is actually a manage data model button that you can click in Excel 2016, but in Excel 2013, you've got to go to the Power Pivot tab and go across to Manage. And now you've opened up Power Pivot. And here you can see the three tables we've loaded. Now this is what's called the diagram view. You can also have the data view. And this shows you three tabs, essentially your three tables of data that you've loaded in. This is just for you to have a quick look at and see that your data has been loaded into Power Pivot. But the most useful setting is this diagram view. 
So we click on diagram view. And now rubs, we just do simple drag and drops. So I can drag store code to store code. You tend to put your data table at the bottom and your lookup tables at the top. Then we drag date to our calendar date. And that's it. That's your lookups done. There could be a million V lookups done instantly. This is really powerful stuff. So now we can just add a pivot table by going to this pivot table button. And we'll just click on new worksheet, OK. And now in Power Pivot, we have access to three separate tables. You couldn't do this and can't do this with a standard pivot table. You're limited to one data source. But because we've linked these together, I can now pick sales from my weekly source CSVs table. And then to get the store name, I go to my store map table and drag store name into the rows. Then I'll add fiscal year as a filter. So I go to my calendar table, drag fiscal year down to filters. And I'll drag my month name into my columns. So I'll just change that fiscal year to 2017, for example. But as we can see, the months are actually sorted alphabetically, so that's no good. And with Power Pivot, there's an extra step you need to do to get your calendar months to sort in the correct order. So you click on the Manage button for Power Pivot, and you go to Data View. And this is my calendar table in Data View. So I want to sort the month name, so I highlight that column. And then there's a button, Sort by Column. So I want to sort that by fiscal month number. And that's why, in, why I imported that fiscal month number column. So I could do this sorting. Click OK. Nothing really seems to happen in that table or that view. But if you click on the close button in Power Pivot, that then gets applied in Excel. And here we have the month numbers in the right order for the fiscal year. So this sort of analysis that Power Pivot is capable of is pretty amazing. We can even add slices for, say, region, or add another slicer for city, just by right-clicking and adding a slicer. And then we can slice and dice the data. And you just build up on top of these reports. That ability to connect to multiple different tables in Power Pivot is pretty amazing. There's my analysis for Perth. So I hope you found that useful and you now understand how Power Query and Power Pivot interact with each other. This is very powerful and Power Pivot and Power Query together with Excel make modern Excel a very powerful business intelligence tool. Please leave me some responses and feedback and there should be links to the various source files and the previous versions and episodes in the links below.